Good afternoon, everybody. Our robot is Creepy Crawler, also known as CC. In case you all are wondering, you guys have probably seen this before. It has appeared in a major motion picture before. It stars as Babyface in Toy Story. This uh, actual scene from the movie is in Sid's room when you first see the robot. Was that you? Hey, hi there, little fella. Come out of here. Do you way out of here? As you can see, our robot is famous and it has appeared in a major motion picture. Uh, basically, in the development of our robot, we divided responsibilities. As a group, we all created the program Logic. Uh, I developed subroutines and Alex and Yi developed the construction of the program, the actual construction of the program. And uh, collectively, we actually put together the robot. Uh, the problem statement is CC is to, able, is to be able to crawl over small objects and uh, follow a lighted path using the use of photo sensors. As you can see, this is a demonstration, crude demonstration. Motivation. It is very important for our robot to have the capability to distinguish between light and dark. The use of legs instead of wheels is giving it the uh, ability to crawl over small objects and able to walk over, as you can see here, a magazine, cardboard, or a plastic what you want ramp. In building our robot, the uh, original design was to have a lighted track. But since the robot doesn't turn as sharply as it did with wheels, a large track would have been used. And a large track just wouldn't have been cost effective to bring and develop and actually bring into the classroom. Uh, so basically, wheels, wheels would be replaced by crawling legs. The whiskers sensors could have been used to avoid objects, but we used IR sensors instead. The possibility to build a larger platform was uh, something we were toying with, but it just wasn't possible. It would have cost too much to have larger uh, servos and, and to redesign the legs that came with the Bobot. Basically, we used four photo sensors in total. Two sensors are connected in series with a relay, two connected in, ses in series with a, uh, a relay, I'm sorry, with a resistor and resistor and capacitor. We used two servos that control the legs. And we got two leg crawlers from the Bobok kit. And the two IR sensors are used in the back for if it ever climbs up a ramp and it's unable to make it over the ramp because of the angle, instead of it toppling over and falling backwards, the IR sensors will tell the robot to walk backwards instead of falling back. Basically, this is the, click the, next one. This is the completed robot. Um, as you can see over here, we have the crawling legs, which um, our photo sensors, these are the two that are using the capacitor. They're looking down. Um, we also added, when we were testing it here in the room with the light, um, the difference between the light on and the flashlight, it wasn't enough for, for it to move, so it was just looking the light from the ceiling. So we added this little platform on the bottom. Um, and then we're going to reflect the light in here, and then the light is going to be reflected back up. Um, how it works is basically the, the way for the capacitor is it charges, and it reads the time delay that it takes um, to receive the light from, from the surface and back. And that's how we program it to, to move. Uh, the ones that are, that are using the, the resistor by itself are on the side of the head. So CC has earrings. Um, if there's light in the side, CC will turn to that side. Let's say if I, if I flash the light over here, the robot will turn this way and it will keep walking if I point back here. Um, and then lastly, the IR sensors are, are very necessary because when it's crawling, if it gets stuck here in this position, like that, we program it so the distance from here to the floor, it will see this distance here and it will just back up and then it can, fi it can find a new path. Because if not, it will just get stuck and 
we will have to manually remove it. Um, for a program, again, what I explained is the whole purpose is so it follows of, uh, the light, which later on it can be used for rescue missions. If you have uh, uh, later on, it could be used for if if there's somebody stranded in a cave, uh, you can turn a a glow stick, and then it will try to follow. It will try to find the person, and send the signal back for the rescue people to tell them there's somebody here. Um, the flow chart, the program how it works, it starts first, and then we added this declare variable here. Because we have to adjust the light from the ambient temp the ambient not the ambient temperature, the ambient mm -hmm. light. And we also have to adjust um, what will be the light with the flashlight. This so we have two different readings. Um, so we want to display it that way we don't have to open another program. So it's all in one program. And then it goes into once you input those values, you go into the do loop and the IR sensor starts sending the light. Um, not the IR sensors, the, the IR LEDs. Um, it's going to measure the time delay that I was explaining, the time that it takes to reach back and forth. And then it's going to debug that, um, that time so you can see what, what's the difference between the ambient light and, and with the fly, flashlight. Then we have, this, uh, uh, we have this if conditions, and then it goes to the subroutines, and then it goes back and <coughs> forth. Okay, for testing phase, you can see that as we uh, crawled onto the books, it got stuck, or it got mostly, it got off the track. And this is what, like we were doing trial and error through the robot, see how it's getting stuck. That's why we added on two IR sensors in the back. And because it was getting stuck so badly, we chose to add on another design for support. And in this video, we added the ball. And as you can see, when it goes on the ball, it goes really smoothly over the, the books because Ooh. basically the ball supported the robot in the back where it needed most. Uh, we use it, right now we use for the magazines and it gets stuck through the magazines because when it walks over the magazines, the pages started lifting and it got caught. This is when we we're testing with the light sensors over this plastic covering. And as you can see, slowly but surely, CC does walk over objects. Uh, she just needs motivation and she has the I think I can mentality. So. Shine it to the other side. Shine it to the other side. So the light. See, it's, it's getting stuck because I, on one side it's not registering and the feet aren't really gripping the floor as they should. Next, uh, lessons learned that we had during this project. We helped. What helped us mostly was our flow chart. The program didn't flow as smoothly as always because we had to calibrate most of our photo sensors. And the details in our um, program was essential to our robot because of all the calibrations between the distance of the IR sensors and uh, how bright uh, the lighted path is on to the robot. And as you can see through the video, the trial and error was mostly important. The optimization of this robot, if we wanted to make it better, uh, we would have had to scale it so it can be it can crawl over larger objects. We another way to make it uh, stronger would be better servos so it can uh, carry itself over heavy the heavy body over uh, objects. Better um, traction on the legs. Sometimes there's slippage between the rubber mats and the floor. Uh, alternative solutions of sensing light. We can have instead of using photoresistors, we uh, photosensors. We use photoresistors because it can distinguish between. There's photoresistors out there that can distinguish light instead of just white and black, and a sturdier platform for the robot. And if you have any questions, we will not charge anybody a dollar fifty or so. But that is our project. <laughs>